This is an extension of the problem from video number four. This is the same problem, a projectile launched at an angle of 40 degrees at seven meters per second from a height of 21 meters. I just wanna focus on the time, the total time of flight from the top to the bottom. Now, the last time we did this, it's a way you can always solve the problem, but I wanna show you another way. Using the quadratic formula, you can do this whole time in one step versus before, we figured out the time on the way up and the time on the way down, and we added those. Now, if you remember, the initial vertical velocity, the velocity in the y component when you launch, is 4.50 meters per second. We got that from 7 meters per second times the sine of 40 degrees. If I want to get the total time, I need to use the total vertical displacement from the very beginning to the very end. So we're going to use the same equation. The displacement in the vertical direction is equal to the y component of the initial velocity times time. That's the total time. Plus 1 half times the acceleration due to gravity. The acceleration in the y direction times the time squared. I'm going to plug in the displacement as negative 21 meters. And the reason I'm going to do that is that the displacement vertically is down 21 meters. The initial velocity is what we found here, 4.50 meters per second times time, plus the acceleration is also negative. So if we take the acceleration to be down, we have to take the displacement to also be down. So that's going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared over 2 times t squared. If I rearrange this, I can get a quadratic equation. So if I bring this over to this side, to the left side, I'm going to get 4 point, this is supposed to be 2, I'm going to get 4.9 t squared, and I bring this over, minus 4.5 t minus 21 equals 0. I'm going to get what looks like an a of 4.9, a b of negative 4.5, and a c of negative 21. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to use the quadratic formula. Now if you don't remember the quadratic formula, it allows you to get the roots of an equation that is of the form of a quadratic. And it's going to be t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, don't forget the square root, all over 2a. So when we plug in the numbers, negative, negative 4.5, so it's going to be 4.5 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 4.5 squared minus 4 times a is 4.9 times c is negative 21. Take the square root of that all over 2 times 4.9. Now I'm going to do what I usually do, which is to do this in steps. So 4.5 divided by 2 times 4.9 or 9.8 is going to give me 0 0.459 plus or minus. Now in the square root, negative 4.5 squared gives you 20 point two five plus four hundred eleven point six and we're going to take the square root of that and that is going to be over nine point eight so rewriting that zero point four five nine plus or minus two point one two one so we get two answers when you add you get t equals 2.58 seconds, and when you subtract, you get t equals negative 1.66 seconds. So this is the total time. So the positive answer is clearly going to be the one that happens after it's launched. So what that means is that the total time in the air of the projectile from the top of the building to the bottom is 2.58 seconds. Now, you may say, does that negative 1.66 mean anything? And the answer is yes, it does. What it means is if I had a projectile and I stepped back for a second, 
what you're really saying is at what time is the displacement going to be minus 21 meters? Well, if you think backwards in time, following this projectile, if it was launched from the ground, it would also have changed position by 21 meters. To do that, you would have had to launch it with that same initial vertical velocity. You just would have had to do it 1.66 seconds earlier, and you'd get the same shape. So there is a physical significance to that. Now, do you have to get the time in one step like this? No, but it is convenient to be able to do that. Um, usually when I make tests, I don't require students to solve it this way, but it's a really good thing to do, and if, if, if you want to get a lot better at this stuff, there really is a lot of value in it, and I recommend you do that. Obviously, the rest of the problem is going to be the same. Getting the range is going to be the horizontal component times the total time. Getting the vertical uh, distance to the top. Now that you know the velocity final when it hits the ground, you could use the VF squared equation. So it really opens up a lot of uh, different possibilities, and I wanted you to know that. Thanks for listening.